Miller's been captive for ten days. Not much time left. The weather will clear shortly. Storm passing. Infiltration of the Soviet main ground forces. Should be the perfect warm up. You can't have much left in him. I give him three days, Tops. If we fail, when he dies, we lose our chance of revenge. But we need more intel. If you just go charging into Doan Dehar, you'll be putting both your lives at risk. See what you can find out first. The Soviets have other outposts, not just the one you saw. Afghanistan is a big place. I expect you'll become quite familiar with those binoculars as you plan your next move. How and where you make it, well, that's up to you. From here on out, you're on your own. You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. That's why you have to handle this mission yourself. Put those nine years behind you and return this big boss. That's how Koss would want. I'll be sending additional intel by radio. Stay sharp. Not one of Miller's bodyguards survived. And they were good. All we found on the scene were their corpses and knees. You'll be missing them. And you're his only hope of getting them back. Hello everyone and welcome to the Gamescom 2014 presentation of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. Two months ago at E3 we showed off various features of the game as we snuck through this stage to accomplish our mission. Today we'll play through the same stage but show you how the same mission can feel completely different depending on the various factors such as route and time of day. Marker placed. Yeah. Back at E3, you remember there were guards at this post, but you'll notice that they're not here anymore. So already we're seeing some variation in the mission. But that said, it looks like there are two soldiers heading this way in a vehicle, so let's go ahead and leave a little surprise for them. Go on.
All right, looks like these soldiers are disoriented, so let's go ahead and Fulton them along with their vehicle before they wake up. As you may recall, back at E3 we ran into a sandstorm which caused some problems, so to avoid that we'll minimize sidetracking and head straight towards our marker. Well, it looks like we have a goat here that's been separated from its herd, so let's see if we can help him out. And there he goes. We have a pack of wolves here too, most likely after the goat. Let's just keep our distance and continue with our mission before they come after us instead. Do remember that the landscape in the Phantom Pain is populated by various types of wildlife. And certain animals, such as wolves, can actually be dangerous, so you need to use caution when exploring the wilderness. Whoa, whoa. All right, so here we are at our vantage point. You have arrived at your destination. But first, what's this in the distance? Ah, oh, well, lo and behold, that's actually the vantage point we used at E3. This gives you some idea of where we are relative to our previous route on the other end of the base. That said, let's go ahead and mark the enemy. And it does look like the security is a bit tighter than it was before. You may remember that when we sneaked into the space previously, we created quite a mess. Uh, so the enemy has actually stepped up their game, and there are more troops here. And this is one example of how the game will actually adapt to player actions, and the same mission may actually be quite different when replayed. It was fairly easy to sneak into the space previously, but we'd have a much harder time if we tried to sneak in during daylight here. So let's go ahead and use our Phantom Cigar to pass the time. At night, as you can tell from the markers, it looks like security around our objective is beefed up. However, security around the rest of the base is fairly sparse, so let's go ahead and use that to our advantage. Oops, and it looks like enemies are wearing helmets now. The last time we played this mission, we used too many headshots with the Trank, so it looks like the enemy has countered by having troops wear helmets this time around. The point here is that if you overuse some weapons or techniques, the enemy will learn to take steps to counter your actions thanks to the AI capabilities of the Fox engine. The direct approach here will be difficult, so let's go ahead and find a way around. We're exposed on an open road like this. Let's go ahead and use our cardboard box to reduce our chances of being spotted. Okay, that said, uh, we have been noticed. This is a bad situation. We can't vacate the box without being spotted. We can try something else. All right, the enemy's running up. But he's not engaging. He actually seems kind of excited. So what's going... Ah. Well, that would definitely explain it. Let's see you see this guy before he gets a little too excited. So this is just one example of several new modifications we've made to our cardboard box since E3. 
thanks to the various people we've recruited into our R&D unit. Even at night, you'll notice that the area around our target is actually pretty well lit, making it difficult to stay out of sight. So let's see if we can find a way to remedy that. This soldier may have some clues. Let's try interrogating him. Spit it out. The map has been updated. Okay, now we have the location of the power grid. So if we destroy it, we should be able to shut the lights off. Alright, that should make things easier. But the enemy is coming to investigate, so let's go ahead and hide in this trash dumpster. Sounds like there may be a helicopter incoming. Seems like the enemy has called in some backup. So the base is darker now, but we need to be careful to avoid the helicopter's spotlight as we head to the target. Target should be in this room. Let's take a look. Alright, so these are the docks we needed. Objective complete. Now all we need to do is escape. We need to move cautiously. We got some reinforcements driving in. That said, their vehicle just may be our ticket out of here, so let's see if we can confiscate it. Please select a landing zone. Landing zone confirmed. Alright, looks like the helicopter has moved into a holding pattern here. Which is bad for us. Obviously we can't drive out of here now without being spotted by the helicopter. So let's try something else. Alright, so 
That takes care of the helicopter. Let's go ahead and call our horse and hightail it out of here. Mission complete. Alright, back at E3 we introduced Mother Base as our central base of operations. And you'll notice that the base we're at now looks similar, but there are some differences. For one thing, you'll notice that this is not the Diamond Dogs logo. We're actually at another player's forward operating base at the moment. During our E3 demo, we stopped at a point when your mother base was being attacked. But this time, we're turning things around to get revenge on that player by infiltrating their base. So let's go ahead and mark some targets. And move on in. Oops. Actually, it looks like we have a gun camera here. In addition to normal security cameras, players can also develop and install automated gun cameras, such as this one. As players build up their resources, expand their base, and invest in research, increasingly powerful weapons and security systems become available. And it looks like this player has invested quite a bit in beefing up their security. So we'll need to be careful. Devices here look suspicious as well, most likely infrared laser sensors. So we'll have to take a detour. Let's take the high road instead. Alright, it sounds like an enemy, so we'll stay low here. Stay out of sight. Take this guy out. Okay, it looks like this player has gathered various resources here, but before we do anything else, let's go ahead and neutralize these guards. In addition to resources, it looks like this guy has also got some pretty nice equipment, which will come in handy for our own defenses. So let's go ahead and grab these first. And we'll also take this guy. By fulfilling soldiers from other players, it's possible to convince them to defect and join your army. Alright, so we'll go ahead and reclaim this stolen property, along with a bit of interest while we're at it. At front operating bases such as this, players can compete and steal resources from one another. In order to protect your resources, you'll need to gather staff, assign security patrols, develop security systems, and invest in developing new platforms. The more platforms you build, the greater the distance that enemies will need to traverse in order to reach their goal, making infiltration more difficult. It's a different type of battle from the main missions, but critical to ensuring the survival and success of Diamond Dogs. Right, so we see our target off on another platform. So let's climb on down and make our way there.
and to help us bypass security, we'll go ahead and use our phantom cigar. Alright, now that we have the cover of darkness on our side, let's go ahead and make our way to the other platform. Looks like we have a UAV here. Let's quietly take it out. Otherwise, the coast looks clear. So let's make a run for it. Whoops, it looks like we got hit by something. And it's... And it's actually the other player. Looks like they've noticed our infiltration into their base and has come to stop us. So that means, unfortunately, our stealth mission was a failure. But we do hope that you enjoyed this glimpse at some of the exciting replayability features and multiplayer options coming to Metal Gear Solid V Phantom Pain. Thank you for watching.